Well, all right, guys. It is time once again for a new video series. This is an old, early 50s radio that I picked up ages ago for, I don't know, 20 bucks. It was one of those consoles, and I scrapped it. And uh, what my plan is for this, I'm going to turn this radio into a radio transmitter. AM radio transmitter so that I can broadcast music from my 78 collection or my phone or whatever onto my old radios because there is absolutely nothing good on AM for me to listen to and I want some music. Um, I drew this up. This is a basic like just a diagram of what a radio is. Power comes in, goes to your power supply, your audio output tubes, your phase inverter, your preamp, your phono input, the detector, which uh, turns the radio signal into audio, the IF, and the oscillator and mixer. Of course, the antenna would come in right here. Now, if you switch all of these around, you can actually make a transmitter. It's, it should be kind of easy, I think, or maybe I'm just overestimating it. All right, I have redrawn the diagram. This is how the radio transmitter works. It's very simple. Audio goes in, your phono input, goes to your preamp, goes around here to your oscillator and mixer. It mixes the audio signal with the radio frequency signal, and that then travels out to your audio amplifier, your radio frequency amplifier, and then that goes out to your antenna. It's very simple. So I think I should be more than able to pull it off with this radio. I'm gonna have to remove a lot of the tubes that I'm not gonna use. I'm not gonna use these tubes here. I'm not gonna use one of these preamp tubes. I'm not gonna use one of these rectifier tubes. But, um, and I'm also gonna remove this contraption here. This is, un I don't need this. This is just for the radio. I'm gonna remove the lights. I'm gonna remove the magic eye tube socket. I'm gonna remove the tuning little control down here. I'm going to remove this this uh, shaft. I'm going to remove under the chassis. I'm going to remove the audio output transformer and, and that's it. That's what I'm going to remove. So I'm going to get to it right now and start pulling crap off of this thing. Well, here you go. It did not take long because I was in a hurry to get it done. It looks better without all that pointless crap in the way. All this crap. What I removed was the magic eye tube socket, the, the light bulb that went to the bottom of the cabinet, the uh, the little the bracket that had the pulleys on it. Those are brass, by the way. Pretty nice. The uh, little tuner pointer, the string I left in one piece. Maybe if I actually want to waste the time to restring a radio, I can reuse this. And I got this nice copper plate here. I wonder if this is solid copper or what, but it's uh, useless. So I might give this to a friend who likes copper. It is working. I got it. I connected the audio from the line input into pin 7 and then I connected the output through this capacitor to the antenna of this pocket radio. So it does work. It proves my theory. Of course it's very weak. It's very weak and um, just... I don't know. It's just very weak. It's just so weak that if it's not within, if it's not directly connected, you, there's no signal, but it does work. Now we just need to rewire it and add a power amplifier to really amplify the signal. The tube that I'm using is the 6B 
E6 tube. I tried using this one first. I tried clipping onto this one. It didn't work. So I moved down to the next tube. 6B E6. This is the one you want to use. Yeah. All right, here we go for the second try now. I've improved the design even more. Now the phono amp doesn't just go straight into the mixer tube. It goes into the 6B, no, the uh, 6AV6 preamp tube. And the output of that is the red wire, which goes up into the mixer tube. And I also jumped out the switch so that the audio signal will always get through to the preamp tube. So now it sounds even better. Sounds very good now, no static. All I need now is to uh, figure out the final part. This has actually been amazingly easy. I'm very surprised. All right, so I'm gonna explain what I did to make this project work. So the 6BE6 is the tube you wanna use in your radio. So the cathode is the negative and it also is connected internally to the suppressor grid, which suppresses some electrons. You have the plate, which is your high voltage. The high voltage comes off the power supply, goes down through the IF, one side of the IF can. You just ignore this, it's fine. You've also got grid three, which is the one you wanna use for your audio input. And then you have grid one, which probably is the oscillator input or something like that, I don't know. But I know grid three is the audio input. All you got to do is connect the audio to grid 3 and the antenna to the plate. Not up here. On the other side of this, you have to connect it directly where it comes out of the plate. And then I used a small capacitor going through that to the antenna so that there wouldn't be any high voltage getting through to the antenna and probably blowing up the radio. I'm going to give an audio test now. Let's see... Restart this. Let's see how long I can dodge some me some YouTube copyright. It sounds alright. It sounds like AM radio. What do you expect? Sounds okay. It's good enough for 78 quality. Well, there you go. I'm going to I'm going to call this part 1 and hopefully in the next part we will fix I mean, uh, figure out how to uh, amplify the signal more so it'll reach farther. Because right now it only goes like an inch. But um, it does work. It works. So if, if you want an extremely low power transmitter that you just connect directly to the radio, that you could build this. I'm sure this could also broadcast in shortwave because it has a shortwave switch here.